Are online multiplayer games like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, Elder Scrolls Online, are they a complete waste of time or is there a very good reason to play them? For the longest time, I felt guilty about playing MMORPGs. These are online games where you team up with others to level up, do quests, and take down monsters. Innocent enough, right? No. They are some of the most addicting games available. You don't casually play MMOs. They consume your life. To get anywhere, you gotta put a lot of time in, sometimes neglecting your friends and family, sometimes neglecting your job, sleep, or health. I've always felt that these games were a guilty pleasure, more bad than good, but there's something changing my mind. I'm confused on how to feel about these games. I've seen they're bad, but I've also seen they're good. I grew up watching my dad play EverQuest as a kid, and I eventually tried it out myself. And I remember my dad would help me get into a group, and he would say to press a macro he made. It would say this to the other players. The little kid playing doesn't read or type. It was a big limitation in a game with 100% text communication. So I pushed myself to learn literacy and typing, EverQuest being the reason why. A video game taught me literacy in a way school could never do, with fun. Fast forward into adulthood, and I got the nostalgia bug. I remember these cool games my dad and I played. Maybe I could get farther now that I'm not seven years old, you know? But this time it was different. I didn't have the childhood friends that I used to. Life became more difficult. I burned out. I didn't play these games for fun. I played them to get away from relationship problems and to forget my parents' declining health. I finished my degree, quit going to my job, stayed in my room for a year, playing these stupid games, gave up on life. That's how my channel started, actually. I thought I'd only get one chance to experience these games in their fullest, so I wanted something to look back on. That's why I made the videos. And I'm surprised at the little success I've had on YouTube. I'm surprised I make money playing video games. It's, it's amazing, frankly. It's a blessing. But I also feel guilty about it because I'm supposed to go out and meet people, make friends, interact with neighbors, have a life that's completely in the real world. Instead, I choose to live this life in virtual reality. Now, thank God I was one of the last generations to play outside with friends. It was more fulfilling. You know, I remember a time before the internet, a time before cell phones, but that era is gone, especially post pandemic. You don't talk to your neighbors. You don't have a friend group. Families are smaller and spread out. Kids don't play outside. This is the world we live in now. I'm learning to accept it, but it's hard. I used to get crap for playing video games. Stop wasting your life. Funny thing is, how is TV or radio any better for prior generations? They wasted their life just as much. At least with video games, you have to actively do something. Why are video games worse than mindlessly watching TV? You know, couch potato. But I still feel guilty because I spent so much time leveling my character in game that I neglected my character in real life. You know, the one that actually matters. Progression is simple in games. Pick up quest, defeat monster, turn in quest, start over. That's all you gotta do to get stronger. Whereas progression is not simple in real life. You don't immediately see improvement. Do you go to college or not? What should you study? Is this person the one or am I missing out on better? What career do you want? These are hard questions that you have to answer in real life that have absolutely no handholding, no clear answer, no immediate reward. These video games, they take away all those difficult decisions. There's only one quest you need to do. When you're done, you pick up the next one. No second guessing if you did something wrong. The rewards are felt immediately. It's easier to progress in games than real life. So much so that many people retreat to their game and neglect reality. Hell, it's a coping mechanism. If something bad happens to me, I don't do drugs. I binge MMO games. At least I have control in virtual reality, you know? I'm painting a dark picture here, yeah? But let's talk about why I feel less guilty now. MMOs create problems, but maybe they help with a bigger one. 
I saw this one guest on Joe Rogan's podcast and later read his book, Johan Hari. He's this journalist who tried to understand what causes depression. Is it just chemicals in your brain going wrong or is there more going on? What I read completely changed my mind on depression and it changed my feelings towards MMO games as a whole. You know, humor me as I go through this. There's a study that asked Americans how many close friends they have how many people they could turn to in a crisis. When the study first started years ago, the most common answer was five. Today, the most common answer is zero. We are the loneliest society in human history. What are some of the causes of depression? In a major experiment, it was found that loneliness is not only the result of depression, it leads to depression. Why? Because it makes sense. The first humans were hunter-gatherers. They lived in tribes of a few hundred people or less. And you and I only exist for one reason. Because those humans figured out how to work together. They shared food, looked after the sick, and took down large beasts. But only because of teamwork. Humans only made sense within a group. Now, say you got separated from the tribe. You were in danger vulnerable to predators, no help if you got sick, and it was harder to feed yourself. The tribe would also be more vulnerable. You'd be right to feel terrible. It was an emotional signal to get back to the group any damn way you could because it was life or death. Our instincts are still wired to live in a tribe, but most of us live alone. It messes with us. Okay, so what actually is loneliness? Say you're in the middle of Times Square, New York. There's so many people around you. You know, you're not actually alone, but you feel alone. Why? Loneliness isn't the physical absence of other people. It's the sense that you're not sharing anything that matters with other people. There needs to be mutual aid and protection. And this leads us to MMO games that encourage people to work together in meaningful ways. In Hari's book, there's crazily enough an anecdote about EverQuest, the MMO game my channel is largely about. In the late 90s, James, this well-dressed young man, met with a psychotherapist to talk about a problem. James was from this small town and a star at his school. He later got into an Ivy League university, but it turned his life upside down. For the first time, he wasn't the smartest guy in the room. He felt apart from the culture of the school. He was alone. And as everyone mingled, he went to his room booted up the computer, and played EverQuest. He could be with people in a world where there were clear, neat rules. He could be someone again. He started to skip class to play EverQuest, and it got to the point where he was expelled. He went back to his hometown, married his high school girlfriend, and promised her that he would give up gaming. He got a job working with computers, and he seemed to be getting his life back on track. But when he felt lonely or confused, he felt intense cravings for the game. One night, he waited until his wife had gone to sleep, snuck downstairs, and fired up EverQuest. It became a pattern. Eventually, he would call in sick and with work just to be able to play the game. Just like with school, he got fired. He started to put all the bills on the credit card, and the more stressed he became, the more he gamed. And by the time he arrived at the psychotherapist office, his life had completely fallen apart. What drew him so much to the game? The therapist said this, Before their internet addiction, these people felt lost and isolated in the world. Then the online world offered these young people things that they craved, but that had vanished from the environment. Such as a goal that matters to you, or a status, or a tribe. You get to be part of a guild, a team. It's tribalism at its core. We live in a culture where people aren't getting the connections that they need in order to be healthy human beings. This is why we can't put down the game. But the difference between being online and being physically amongst people, it's like the difference between pornography and sex. It addresses the itch, but it's never satisfying. Screen-mediated technology is not giving us what we need. I completely agree. The friends, I make playing these games are not as fulfilling as the people I hang out with in real life. But there's an argument to be made. Yeah, real human interaction is preferable, but that's not always an option. If playing with people in an online game is all the social interaction you can get, 
then what's the better option? If it's the only thing stopping you from feeling completely alone, it makes sense to play. So long as you're not hurting yourself or others, right? I feel different about these games because of this. If MMOs are the only way you can meet some of your social needs, then are they really that bad? It's not ideal, yeah, but it's better than being completely alone. I don't know how to feel about these games. I see the good and the bad. They are a waste of time, but there is some good to them too. I take solace that of all the video games I play, I like the ones that force you to be social. Just don't let them consume your life, like with David playing EverQuest. <laughs>